Hey, what's up guys? It's Adam with RC Logger. Um, today I'm going to take some time, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the RCI 450 and 650 tweaker software, as well as uh, go through here and kind of explain the uh, dip position switches on the main control board so you at home can understand how this product works and what makes everything, uh, what makes everything tick. So hopefully you enjoy this video and it's informational. Uh, first and foremost we're looking at the RCI 450. It's not on the market yet but it will be very shortly. Uh, the nice thing is is that the tweaker software works with either one, the 450 or the 650 which is already out. Uh, in order to do this, you're actually going to need to connect some wires and whatnot. Uh, the number one thing I would recommend is start by taking the propellers off of your multi-rotor whenever you work on it. Uh, it's just a, it's a given. You know, we like fingers. Uh, they're good. Uh, hold on to them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take the multi-rotor platform itself and we need to turn the dip position 3 switch on. Now, understand that this is in here and this camera is only going to do so good but basically there is a small dip block on here with all these little dips and we are going to go in here and I'm just going to make sure all of them are off with the exception of three so I've just flipped three down and oh man that's like next to impossible to see and you just have to take my word for it um, you'll see that on the main control board there's a total of six dip switches just make sure the dip 3 is down. The next step is to apply power to the RCI and uh, basically your battery, plug it in and you're going to get a little green flashing light on the main control board. The next thing that you want to do is to take the tweaker cable that is now being supplied with the RCI 650 and I believe the 450 when it comes out. The um, tweaker cable is a necessity otherwise it will not interface with your computer so you're going to plug the tweaker cable in uh, let's see there's a four pin switch a four pin plug right at the top and you're going to take your tweaker cable and plug it in you're done setting up the next thing you need to do is open your software and I will be right back to explain how that goes okay we're back here and uh, what we're gonna do is pop open the RCI tweaker software it is downloadable free from rclogger.com uh, in addition to that we also have a really cool commander software that's like an awesome interface for a lot of FPV stuff and if you want to do any flight recording and go back and look at your flight uh, stuff like that here in the new future it's also going to uh, control the autonomous flying system uh, as well of the RCI uh, 650. So uh, let's go in here and pop this uh, software open. <clears throat> and if you notice, uh, first what you're going to get is a um, screen that looks like this. Uh, if you have the dips on in the right position and everything else, uh, the batteries plugged in, everything, you're not going to get any weird error codes. You're just going to just bring it up. Uh, the first thing what we're going to do is we are going to click the read version button. And what that's going to do is going to tell us exactly what kind of hardware and what kind of firmware we're running on our multi-rotor. As you can see, this firmware says version 7.0, and that's a good thing. But I'm going to show you how to update the firmware at this point in time anyhow. So it's really simple. You see the firmware update button. You're going to click it. Uh, it's going to bring up a folder, and I'm going to select firmware 7.0 bin. Uh, this, uh, this bin file is also downloadable through the RC Logger website. Just take your time and read the instructions, and then it'll tell you exactly where to dump this bin folder into. So I'm going to double click that and you're going to watch this thing, it's going to go through a process. First it's going to start off by updating the main control and obviously this says please do not turn off and you definitely don't want to turn off. Uh, at this point in time I'm going to point out why we plug the battery in. This system has, uh, just like any other multi-rotor platform, it has electronic speed controllers. Uh, however, these speed controls are very different in that they are actually microchip computer processors as well. So in order for this particular update to take place, the ESCs need to be spoken to also. So right now you'll see it's going through and it's updating every motor chip driver. And basically what's going to happen is it's going to walk itself through this process. Um, this takes probably like two minutes to do. And here in another five seconds, the boring part will be over.
Okay, it's just going through here and it's going to finish up chip four. Now after that, what it's going to tell you to do is going to tell you to um, restart the RCI in normal mode before adjusting any parameters. And it also won't tell you what firmware you have until you've basically restarted the RCI. So th at this point you can go ahead and do that. Uh, another thing is you want to recommit your transmitter to the quad itself. In other words, the settings that you went through when you initially set up your platform will need to be reset. So you'll have to go through and do the channel recognition memorization process. We will cover that in another video, but for now you can refer to your instruction manual and it will walk you right through that. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the quad is talking to the firmware. Uh, we're going to do that by making sure that the correct uh, inner port, the, the port itself, is, uh, is correct. And basically what you see here is uh, COM5, which is basically the USB plug that uh, I am plugged into right now. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click the configuration tab. Things are going to get bigger and you're going to see all kinds of cool stuff like this. Um, there's a couple of things that are going to happen here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to explain to you the remote control function. First and foremost you, foremost, you see all these numbers are zero right now. Well, we don't want that. We want these numbers to, these values to say something. So what I'm going to do is click the read data tab. And what it's going to do is it's going to take and bring the data in that is preloaded on the RCI after uploading the firmware and it will give you a nice little tab that says, hey, I have all the data, hooray. Now I have some figures and some numbers. Uh, the first thing that I wanna talk about is the remote control function setting. Basically, uh, this is the um, factors. Uh, what the factor does essentially is if you increase this value, you're gonna get more throw. You're gonna get a much more active, aggressive platform. If you decrease the values, you get less. Uh, exponential is pretty much a no-brainer. It softens up the center of the stick. So even if you have a lot of throw and a lot of exponential, you can make the center of that stick pretty soft and the outside of it pretty pretty aggressive. Uh, the next thing I'm going to cover is the gas control. Um, basically, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, what we did was we kind of reduced the amount of throttle. So even though you have max control, and let's say you're doing like a fast punch out or something like that, you want to climb really quickly. If all the motors went to 100%, you would have no control over the multi-rotor as it ascended. So we saved a little bit of backup. This is adjustable right here. If you don't want so much backup, you don't need it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the flight leveling. To be honest with you, this is probably one of the more confusing sides of the parameter configuration. Uh, I can tell you this. The new firmware is wonderful. It, it really helps the quad. It makes it smooth. And if you want to make it aggressive, you can make it aggressive. Essentially, personally, I wouldn't recommend messing with any of this. If you understand how to use um, integral and proportional and how they, how they uh, work with each other, um, go ahead. I personally have no need for it, so I don't use it. I just leave it alone. I'm very happy with the way this flies, and I'm sure you will be too. Uh, so basically, that is uh, the initial settings. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to give my quad like more throw. I wanted it to be more aggressive. I could go up here, and I could change a couple factor numbers just by clicking on it. Well, let's make these both equal. And let's turn our rudder yaw rate up a little bit as well. And let's say, okay, well, I like the way that looks and maybe I want a little more exponential. Let's take this up to like 60% or something like that. Cool. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take this data and I wanna transfer it over. Well, that's pretty straightforward. You just click the transfer data button and you'll get a little sign that says the data successfully been transferred. Okay, cool. Now let's say I just don't want those settings anymore. I want to go back to the stock ones. Here's a button that says get standard parameter and it will automatically reload those um, parameters. The only thing it hasn't done yet is transferred it back over to the RCI. So click the transfer button and now it has those standards, standard parameters back with it. Uh, the next thing you could also do is you could save a configuration. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You click the button, it asks you where you want to save, save it, and it will save your configuration as a bin file. The next thing you can do, if you wanted to load one that you really liked, you could just click that button, bring those configurations right back into the software, and load it again. Uh, also, if you get into problems, there's a help button. It's very, very useful. 
take your time, go through. It will thoroughly explain everything that I'm missing right now. All right, so we've done that part. We've shown you a little bit of the tweaker software, and now we're going to go back through here, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about the dip position sensors. Okay, we're back. And what we're going to do now that we've uploaded new parameters into our RCI is to show you how to use them. Uh, so first and foremost, we don't need anything plugged in anymore. We can unplug the uh, data transfer cable and we can unplug the battery. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go in and adjust some dip switches. First and foremost, what we need to do is we need to take them and put them all back to, let me find that little guy in there. We need to put them all back to the zero setting. Oh, there it is. We're going to turn all the dip switches off. After that, we're going to go through and we're going to recalibrate our RCI. Um, basically, uh, you'll go through the setup menu. Um, you'll put dip four in the on position. And this is a recognition position. So you're going to then take your transmitter and follow the setup instructions to um, basically remember the control functions from your transmitter. After that, you're going to turn dip four back off. Now, the standard position basically is the plus configuration. What we want is we want to be able to fly in the X configuration. In order to do that, we need to turn dip five on now we are set up to fly in the X configuration where this is forward, okay? The next thing we wanna do is we want to use the parameters that we have now given the RCI. In order to do that, if, the, if you don't wanna use the standard parameters, you actually need to put the dip position two to on. This is the user position. In addition to that, we decided that, or I've decided that I do not want the accelerometers to interface with the flight control. In other words, uh, currently when I'm flying this platform and I let go of the sticks, it will automatically level itself out. I like that. Some people do, some people don't, but for this particular thing, we're not going to do that. In order to disable the um, accelerometer, you would take the dip one switch and you would put it in the on position also. Okay, so to go back through and to finalize on this, I'm in the user for setting, I'm in the X configuration, and I don't want the accelerometers on. Basically what that means is I'm gonna turn on dip five for the X config, I'm gonna turn on dip two for the user parameters that I've given it, and I'm gonna turn dip one on to negate the accelerometer from interfacing during flight. After that, you're ready to go flying. Now, another thing that I want to point out is, let's say you don't want to just adjust any of the uh, uh, flight parameters, you just want to stick with the factory ones. All you're going to do is just turn dip two off. So you're going to have dip one on and dip five on, and then you should be good to go. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, we are going to do a flight video next, and uh, thank you very much for watching.